Hi guys, welcome to Music Theory Grade 3, Part 3, in which we're going to be discussing intervals, transposition, and musical terms and signs. Okay, intervals. In Grade 3, we need to know exactly what we learned in Grade 2, which is all the intervals in major and minor keys. So here in your major key, we have a major second, a major third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, major sixth, major seventh, and perfect octave. So again, in a major key, you have major or perfect intervals. In this minor key, of course, because of course we're going to look at the key signature first, so we know we're in C minor, we'll have that major second, because it's exactly the same combination of notes as in the major key. We'll have a minor third, because remember this E flat, so it is a C to an E flat, which is a minor third. Perfect fourth, perfect fifth, minor sixth because of this A flat. Major seventh, of course, because the seventh has been raised, so it's the same as in the major key. And then again, this perfect octave. Okay, so remembering that in a minor key we have major, minor, or perfect intervals. And also, guys, please remember, remember, remember to look at your key signatures and even, I would say, mark in where the flats are. So I would have put a little flat next to this E and a flat next to this A, just so you can work out that it's a minor and not a major third. I did go into a little more depth in this in the, in the grade 2 video, so if you're a bit unsure, maybe watch the grade 2 video. Okay, transposition. In grade 3, you'll be expected to be able to transpose music up or down in octave and also maybe up or down from bass clef to treble clef. Transposing an octave is really simple. Okay, all tra What transposing means is you are changing the pitch of a, either a passage or a note. Okay, so you're just changing the pitch, but essentially the pas passage should still sound the same, just at a different pitch. Okay, so transposing an octave is very simple as the note names will be exactly the same. And they're just going to be eight lines or spaces higher or lower on the staff, or maybe in the bass or treble clef. Okay, so here you can see an octave. We start down here on this low, low E. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's eight notes, which forms one octave. So you can say this is an octave above this. Similarly, this F, this F will be an octave above this F. This G, this G will be an octave. Okay, so it's always eight notes, but an octave, they'll always have exactly the same note name. Okay, now when transposing from the bass to the treble clef or from the treble clef to the bass clef, remember that this C, middle C, is exactly the same as this C. That is the same note. So on a piano, if you were given this note to play and this note to play, that would be exactly the same note. So in the same way, this D is the same as this D, etc. This E is the same as this E. Okay, so if you were asked to transpose this note, this middle C, transpose it an octave lower in the bass clef. What you do is just find out where exactly that note is in the bass clef, so that's the same note, and then transpose it an octave lower, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, so you'd end up with this C. So essentially this C is one octave lower than this C. Okay. So the same would be if you were transposing an octave higher from the treble clef to the bass clef, let's say they gave you this E here. And they said, okay, transpose this E an octave higher. What you'd do is you'd find out where in the treble clef this E would be. Okay, so a good way to maybe do that would be to look at middle C and say, okay, it's one, two, three, four, five, six notes down from middle C. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so this E on this low ledger line here is the same as this E. So now all we have to do is transpose it up an octave from this E. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so that would be your note. 
and you're going to have to do this obviously um, if they give you a passage you're going to have to transpose every note. The above passage is really the same sounding music in four different octaves. Okay, The note names are the same in each octave, they're just pitched an octave higher or lower. If you're asked to transpose up an octave, you're going to write the exact passage eight notes higher than written or down an octave eight notes lower than written. If you're asked to transpose into the bass or treble clef, just make sure that you use the correct note names at the right pitch. Okay, so if they asked you to transpose this into the bass clef, um, an octave lower, and you wrote a middle C, that would be wrong because it's the wrong pitch. You haven't transposed it down an octave. You've just taken the same note into the bass clef. This would be down the octave. Okay, so here, what we have here is, as I said, it's the same music in four different octaves. So this is obviously the highest octave, and this is transposed an octave down. You'll see all of these are in, are in octaves. Okay, and this is transposed an octave down from there, and again, this is an octave down. Okay, or vice versa, you could say that this note here is an octave higher than that, and this one is an octave higher than this. These are all Cs, okay? Again, these are all Gs. So... This is really a good example of just different octaves of music. And you'll only be asked to transpose in octaves. Okay, finally, terms and signs. Okay, we've spoken about things like dynamics, tempo, character, and articulation. Remembering dynamics is louds and softs. Tempos are your speeds. Character is really the character or the emotion that you put into it. And articulation would be... The, the attack, so if something is played short or if it's being given its full length. Okay, so the dynamic turns are con forza, which means with force, marcato, which means marked or with accentuation, rinforzando, which is often shortened to RF, RFZ, or RINF, these mean reinforced or emphasized, sforzando or sforzato, which is often shortened to SF or SFZ, and this means um, made loud, so it's a sudden strong accent. Sforzando piano, which we know that piano means soft, and that sforzando means made loud, so it's a sudden accent and then, and then suddenly soft, so it'd be something that maybe starts really loud and then gets soft quickly. Smorzando means dying away, a drop in dynamics and often tempo as well, so that'll be often at the end of a piece. We'll say small sando, and you'll have to really keep that note and let it die away to nothing. Your tempo markings, con moto means with movement. Lebhaft means briskly or lively. Masik means moderately. Stringendo means gradually getting faster. Your character terms would be agitato means agitated. Animato or con anima, animatedly or with animation. Ausdruck means expression. Bewegt means with speed or moving. Con brio, with vigor. Con espressione means with expression. Con spirito means with spirit. Dolce means sweetly. Energico means energetically. Frisch means vigorously or with strength and movement. Grave means slow and seriously. Maestoso means majestically or in a stately fashion. Marziale means martial or solemn and fierce. Mesto means mournful and sad. Misterioso means mysteriously. Pesante means heavy or ponderous. Traurig means heavy, mournful and sad. And zat means tender. Okay, articulation. We have non legato, which really means not legato. So not smoothly, slightly detached, as we know legato means smoothly. Staccatissimo is very, very short and detached, even more so than staccato. Remember staccato means short and detached, so staccatissimo is really extremely short and detached.